Good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to share a topic or terminologies which we use quite commonly, resumes and curriculum meeting. I'm sure many of the students, many of the job seekers might have come across these terms, resumes, as well as curriculum meeting. Where do we use this? Do we use this often? Yes. Share your resume, share your CV. Is there any difference between the two or are they similar? Can we have a deep insight into this? Let me see, let me take you through the slides. Let me take you through the journey or let me take you through, through this terminologies, where and how to use it. Now, if you look at this, CVs and resumes, they are functionally similar. So which one should you use? Even wondered if you should use a curriculum meeting or a resume. How do I use it when I'm applying for a job? I'm getting confused now. Should I use a resume or should I use a curriculum meeting? Now, this would depend on what type of job profile you're going in for, what would be their requirements, what would be their priorities? Because normally the companies or normally the organizations who are sharing their requirements are very clear, very focused with what profile they want for the, from the candidate. So if we apply for a job, our resume or our CV should be very precise, should be to the point, should be focused because none of the job seekers have an ample or have long duration of time to look into your CVs or resumes. So if we have a compact, a concise, a focused, and a CV or a resume which is highlighting your positivities, your values, your, your skills, they'll matter more. The document would be more relevant to the concerned job seeker. So I would take you down here. Now CV, now curriculum vitae, this is an abbreviation. We use it as curriculum vitae, but in Latin, actually this word is course of life. The word itself is quite clear. It's your life's accomplishments. Now in life, the first accomplishments normally as a student, if we take, is your basic school level accomplishments, your grades. Precisely in our country, we definitely take down your last 10th or 12th grades, academic roles. Basically, your academic roles, your graduate schools, or what, what did you do in your school curriculum? What were your accomplishments? Okay. So, that's what I told you. CV is your course of life. What, what in life, in terms of academics, you have accomplished. So it will definitely add on. It grows over your lifetime. Or as you need more and more, or you get, gather, or you put down the information, the CV, the course of life grows. And it definitely should grow. Because if it grows, you grow not only for not only in your uh, job or your career in your life also your achievement or your goals go higher and higher so cv as it is i told you is a course of life it's a very interesting uh, terminology which i'm sharing here because uh, for me course of life is starting from your academics your uh, school levels then it goes down to your above school levels or your college levels and then from your college level, it may go down up to your postgraduate levels, doctorate levels, until you finish your education, right? And then the accomplishments or the course of life goes on to your, it goes on to your accomplishments in your jobs now. Jobs means what you give to the company based on your accomplishments in your academic, when you work, in the academics, those roles, those informations, those studies definitely have an impact in your job or in your uh, career. 
wherever you go because those are a, not only a part of your life they are a way of your life they are your habits of life and they are your uh, basically role models or they are basic tools with which you utilize in your career also now here now so normally cv is more precisely it is preferably to use curriculum vitae in academic or in seeking opportunities in academics because when in academic cv obviously you will write your personal details the personal details are very important especially your the details which will be needed when you are communicating to a job seeker and how does he communicate back to you some sort of a communication in terms of personal information is needed in addition first of all to your academic or your educational accomplishments but academic cv when you're sharing it with a job seeker who's from an academic background who is needing a, per, a person in academics who you would need for example you're giving and submitting an academic cv so a very important thing if you add on to your cv will be a very great accomplishment why because your publications your research activities which you carried out or you took part in a research project or the conferences wherein your research was being uh, wherein your research paper was published or you put down a poster presentation would be very helpful because this shows your participation this shows your interest because the cv is actually a showcase of or it is a document which is going to market you or which is going to tell about you in the market or from the job seeker also as well as academic positions if you do not have if you have any non academic and suppose you participated in a research product project sorry uh, or in a debate or in an essay which was mainly related to your academics and you have very good writing skills you could write an essay maybe you could you could write a blog you could write any of content writing which is your core precisely strong area so here you have to really highlight your honors or your awards or your participation so that the job seeker or the person who's looking at your cv knows your positives knows where to put you down in the right position wherein he gets the correct output of his work and in this case it's a win win situation for the job seeker as well as for the person who has entered a job or a person it is a win win situation for both the parties actually as well as a person who is doing the job could do it with his own interest because he has accomplishments or he has interests in those areas now this was we were talking of a curriculum vitae curriculum vitae would be a more detailed one because your educational qualifications should be highlighted more in a cv now when you use the term resume resume is a one to two page precisely if you talk of resume one to two page summary of your work more of your work experience your skills very important skills as well as your job related qualifications job related qualifications suppose if i am applying for a job in a research area so the qualification mode which would be mattering would be of actually my post graduate so that would be the my most relevant it's not the graduation would not matter but if i put down it if i put this down or if i show this in my resume i would put the first qualification as post graduation and then i would put my qualification as graduation plus when did i qualify as well as my scores yes scores matter scores matter because it shows the amount of efforts you might have put down as a as a student or in terms of your interest in the subjects definitely so it is used to apply mostly it is used to apply on jobs mostly outside academics academics may you may need more of cv your education qualifications your research oriented publications so that's why i told you a resume is a one to two page summary i would put down a summary in 
few bullet points, I would just mention, yes, I have these many skills. I have worked in business organization as well as uh, this standard resume length is one page, precisely one to two page. I've mentioned it as one page long, as well as it should have a chronological resume format, which is mainly focusing on like, what is your work history? Means, suppose if I do not have a work history or do not have a past, I could put down an internship. I could even put down uh, my training. If I had a training in an industry or in a, maybe in a marketing background, I could put down those one month, two months, three months, whatever training I've undergone with the areas wherein I was trained, with the, fo with the focus on my interest, wherein I participated to a full extent along with maybe, maybe the employee of the company also. Now, resume also includes a skill section, which lists the skills you have attained in your previous roles. Skill section means previous roles. It not only involves previous roles, means it is a, your uh, previous uh, experience, but even it involves the skills when you were in academics also, because those skills definitely count not only in your uh, uh, job, but those skills count in your lifetime. You participated, you organized an event. So that was important here. Sorry, sorry for the interruption. So here, resumes will also include a skill section. They list the skills. Very important, your skills, what matter. This is a sample resume which I'm sharing here. So you can put down your name, your phone number, your mail. I told you the communication wherein from the person who has shared a job opening would be very important. So some sort of a mail or a phone communication, which is where the details are important. Objectives. Now, what are my, what, what is my objective of doing a job maybe? For example, if I'm going in for a sales and a marketing job, I put it down here. So I oriented, it should be a detail oriented. It means I should have an objective, which is I have an orientation towards a sales and a marketing perspective. I am knowledgeable in pharmaceutical products. So points like these should be put down in your objective so that you are an asset to the company. You are the right candidate for the company. A person who reads a, even a two-liner statement of an objective is impressed. Yes, I want this candidate. Plus your summary of the skills now. That's what I was telling you, a skill-oriented resume or a or, or a resume which has a lot of details on your skills. Okay, for example, when we are we're mentioning summary of skills, we are mentioning that, okay, I have an in-depth knowledge of various pharmaceutical dosage forms. I am familiar with the many of the terminologies which are used, maybe your GMP, your distribution practices, your report as well as your skills which would be required or used in, as a sales representative also. Then I am like, I'm a, pro, I'm a person who, who is, should you, uh, I'm a time bound person. I'm a person who would be seeing time management, scheduling appointments with the persons, with the physicians, arranging calls, talking to them about the latest. So I'm a person who would be giving you an, I would be giving you an area or I would be giving you a time bound or a time bound outcome of the process or the activities which have been assigned to me or I would be an asset or I'll be meeting my goals. I'll be meeting my sales goals. I'll be able to give you even details like I'll be able to talk to the concerned person, the physician. I'd be able to meet monthly sale goals as well as workshops as well as a team player in terms of communication, interpersonal skills, anywhere, I would be a, an asset to the company. Then I'm uh, in terms of work experience. Suppose if I have a work experience, it is fine. Okay, you mentioned the way, what, what experience you had, which, which areas you had covered. You were into managing the budget or you were into organizing the discussions. 
you were with the clients or you were into scheduling appointments or you were into uh, sorry or you were into only maintaining a database on whatever sales we have achieved on the monthly basis with the customers or you were into basically other duties of filing your sales or you were directly involved with the team in guiding them training them how to carry out those sales activities okay so this was your this was your work experience like what was your work experience like plus it has even a more detailed like did you achieve this so and also mentioning your like honors and uh, honors means your achievements mentioning your achievements i could achieve the sales target for the two consecutive years or whatever time duration you have i was a very good team player i was a very good i participated with the team i prepared presentations which were more needed and which were really helpful for achieving my goals of achieving that particular sales now suppose if you're an entry level suppose you do not have an experience but you're an entry level you are going down and the first time for the sales representative job still in case you have you can mention during your academics also what were you actually aiming at whenever you were in your academics and how did you try to do this like okay you wanted to go in for a sales and a representative job so you were more involved in team activities in the your institutions you organized many events you even took part even in uh, speaking in a debate in countering people even in defending your uh, uh, counterparts about your products about your research topics or about the topics especially in case of pharmaceutical products you have endless list of products so you actually took part even you took an initiative in organizing events like this so that this was helpful when you move out of this it will be a skill not only a skill asset you can go in for this as a career also okay as well as so now so as well as whenever you are mentioning here in terms of skills your bullet point wise all your skills all your achievements remember them put it down jot it down on a document or put it down on a paper and always keep it as a as a standby then your education now for example if i am a bachelor's degree okay i have a graduate degree so as well as a diploma so graduate is a higher degree so whenever you mention it the highest degree at the top and then go on mentioning the below maybe your 10th or 12th grade so it actually adds on it actually adds on to your uh, coming down into the company because your grades because whenever we talk of education like maybe in 10 whenever we go down uh, enter into a graduate level program there also they mention your 10th or 12th grades which should be a minimum of 55% and you have achieved the first division down so mention those grades mm -hmm. what you have then any certificates you might have done some sort of a distant learning programs or may had some sort of certifications along with you it shows your which shows your skills not only your skills which shows your interests also so that is always an asset there also references should always be provided on request references actually are a feedback that you are a genuine person yes you have these qualities because it adds on to your qualification not exactly your quali uh, qualification but it adds on to your it adds on to your credibility more okay so now this is a sample cv but this is mostly that's why i mentioned it's for freshers again your personal details put it on the top put your objective objective means i am going in for a particular job for this purpose for this requirement so your objective should fit into the purpose of opening your general requirements or what the company also is looking at it should be a both of it it's not only what is your requirement is the company's requirement also now executive summary i've used a term here 
executive summary means what? Means because I'm fresher, I have to focus now more on my qualification, my grades, what I achieved during my academic roles, during my student life. Okay, experienced candidates definitely put down your work experience, your skills, wherein you work really hard. Then, especially today's world, if you have very, you cannot go without having some knowledge on a software package because it's a digital world as it is as on today we are seeing we are completely relying everything online eventually i'm down sitting down sharing with you an online video which actually the topic is resumes and cv but i'm sharing it through a software medium only. okay so this which will be useful for the company the company also will realize yes the person is software savvy or is a computer savvy person so it's a very good place to be mentioned so okay as well as mention about your maybe you might have traveled down this is very important here i'll tell you why because some of the companies would prefer maybe you traveling down to different places for their work or for their job related queries or anything so you are uh, you are open to that okay so that's an important essay there also so again here i told you so pressure concentrate more on your grades and achievements in your academics your first graduation level wherein did you participate what what did you achieve what what did you learn maybe you participated in a conference what did you learn an online education conference yes how useful it is as on today's world something relating to that then job responsibilities mention about your key responsibilities never in a cv make it it's not only in a CV, even in a resume, I don't make it as a paragraph. Nobody reads elaborate paragraphs. Maybe we all are so uh, tech savvy these days. A bullet point and a focused matter which is being mentioned in responsibilities is very useful. Use words which are professional, like write about the skills that you've acquired, even during your education, even during your uh, uh, academics. So use those professional words which could be helpful to you okay as well as achievements whatever you could you participated in a various activities and you achieved these so mention your certificate it is that is in the form of a certificates what was your recognition and all your things in that case extracurricular activity is very important because it shows about your personality how you are you're able to take part in a lot of things it's not only the education, the other fields also count because it's a, it's a matter of uh, uh, overall personality or it's a matter of multitasking these days. It's not a matter of just taking part in one area, it's a matter of taking part in more areas also. How do you keep yourself maybe fit? How do you keep yourself engaged, etc. Then work. Uh, Then your hobbies, what do you do? You read books, you have, you are uh, more tech savvy. What else hobbies can add on to your skills, which can be utilized somewhere else also? Personal information, definitely. Languages known is a very important aspect. Why? Because uh, they can be useful sometimes in your translations, even in sometimes in pharmaceuticals especially whenever you have been given some designated work sometimes translation sometimes translating in terms of your work documentation is also needed even in labeling conditions you have to put down your labeling patterns in different languages so if you're aware you can read write languages please mention them they will be really helpful to you so as well as they would be helpful even down to you uh, going down and working down to those places, communicating with those people, because communication skills, communicating with different different land, uh, peoples or with different uh, people of different states who have who are not so uh, not so much conversant with Hindi or with English would be very helpful. References again provided when you are asked for. Normally, whenever you give a reference, you give it with one is from your maybe professional life, one is from your professional personal life also because it adds on to your credibility. 
it's very important it adds on really to your credibility okay so i hope this video is useful for you you have any queries we can take it up thank you